So guess what we're doing today? We're on a mission out into the middle of not only the Thames estuary, but near where it meets the North Sea. We're gonna be seeing the Red Sand Sea Forts and the SS Montgomery ship laden with explosives. What could go wrong? Let's find out. Turn on that. On we go. Might be the last time we take a step off of dry land. Roll these good cheers. We were off to the alien landscape where the Thames meets the sea. Far from empty, we would finally get to see its rusting wartime relics after years of waiting. This was no short ride, and it would take us on a journey through endless waters and faint landmarks as we left familiar territory. First we passed the Mulberry Harbour we walked to in our previous video at low tide. It was strange seeing it so submerged from the opposite direction. We then passed the Isle of Grain and the legendary Grain Tower before getting a glimpse of the SS Richard Montgomery, which we will look at at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Joe's got his new camera, Fujifilm Expo 2, Expo 3, there we go. Got the good old Nikon Z50. So if you look on here, this is where we are now. We've just gone past the Mulberry Harbour. If I zoom out a bit, so we're heading out into the sea. Uh, Red Sands we was somewhere around there. Five, we'll come six, back to the seven, Montgomery eight, and then back eight, towards eight, the end, three. the South End Pier. The Red Sand Sea Forts were built around 1942 to fortify the Thames estuary against air raids, and whilst too late for the Blitz, their position at the very start of the Luftwaffe's flight path to London made them highly effective. They were essentially heavy anti-aircraft batteries on top of Barrett blocks, equipped with four 3.7 inch guns and command searchlight and Bofors towers. These Maunzel forts were of the army design alongside those at Shivering Sands, which you can see further out in the distance here to the left. Emerging on the horizon like ghosts at sea, we drew closer to the forsaken wrecks. It was finally time to see them up close. After they were abandoned, many of the army forts became home to pirate radio stations in the 1960s. 
Several naval forts were also built in a different design, including the infamous Principality of Sealand, a self-proclaimed nation of its own. At Red Sands, today one of these towers is serviced by the charity Project Red Sands, although it is obviously difficult to fight the force of the sea and save what are possibly England's most isolated ruins from decay. We're in amongst them now. Pretty unreal this. Look at that. For 25 quid, you can't go wrong with that, can you? Finally, we had reached the edge of our realm. As often as we strive to find what lies beyond the point, on this unique occasion, it truly felt like we got there. No lens can really capture what it's like to stand in the footsteps of these giants. No further from War of the Worlds than a world at war. One can only begin to imagine the sense of being stranded that troops would have felt being stationed out here on these hulks for over a month at a time. In 2005, artist Stephen Turner lived alone on one of the towers at Shivering Sands for six weeks to become immersed in isolation. But even from our short visit, we felt as if we had been transported to another world. Perhaps there is no better metaphor for abandonment than these towers, truly alone in their decay. And now it was time for us to leave them behind. However, our adventure was not yet concluded. Off the coast of Sheerness is the wreck of the SS Richard Montgomery, an American cargo ship which became wrecked off the coast of Sheerness. It is most famous for 1.5 thousand tonnes of TNT in the bombs which still lie on board. Whilst its severity has been debated, if it was to accidentally explode, the blast would be enormous, reaching beyond the estuary and to its surrounding towns, posing a risk to properties in South End and Sheerness from flooding and blast damage. It is said that it could result in an enormous crater on the seabed and a tsunami of at least a metre or more in height. In June 2022, work is proposed to begin to cut down the shipwreck's masts sticking out of the water, as there is a fear that if they collapse, they will fall onto the deck of the shipwreck below and they could trigger the explosives. We were allowed as close as is possible to the cordon of buoys set up around the wreck to warn of its dangers. Passing Garrison Point Fault, we eventually headed back for the pier. So we're on our way back, uh, we're almost at Southend Pier, it's been absolutely amazing to be honest, like the, the places we've seen 
has been probably the best £25 I think I've ever actually spent to be honest. Yeah we definitely got our money's worth, the falls were really impressive, just these big towering structures looking at us uh, and then of course the Montgomery uh, shipwreck that we saw afterwards, uh, seeing those masks which aren't going to be here in a couple of months. No, so unique got in sight. In little time. And we've <laughs> all been taken really close to them all, like we went between the falls themselves and right up near the mast so yeah it was, it was epic I reckon. Yeah no it's been a really good day, um, we've seen stuff that's pretty unique and uh, yeah hopefully you all enjoyed this video if you have make sure you do like and subscribe you know check out our Instagram for more photos and of course our website where we've got articles on well hundreds of places so there'll be something there that you like